So welcome back to AI Insights with John Rose. You know, in, a, in, a, in past episodes, we've been exploring what enterprise AI is, but you know, today uh, we want to dig a little deeper into the current state of the enterprise AI market and environment, and 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 what we're seeing as signals and data about how this industry is evolving. And so to do that, I, I want to invite my friend Vivek to, to join us. Vivek runs corporate strategy at, at Dell, and the two of us are partnered on lots of different activities, including this this AI journey. Um, one of the things that, that happens in Vivek's world is uh, gathering lots of data, surveying yeah. the customers, engaging with the market to see what the signals are about what is happening in our world. So, you know, you guys have just done some pretty comprehensive global surveys on the AI market and specifically enterprise AI adoption. You know, what kind of things did we did we find out? Yeah, no. Hey, John, excited to be here. Thank you for having me on this podcast. I've been watching uh, the previous version. It's phenomenal. Uh, look, I think as you mentioned, we gather a lot of external data. So we went out uh, and surveyed 3,800 customers globally. And we asked them, hey, what are your plans for AI? Where are you using it? What are the big bottlenecks you see? And there's some really interesting findings. You know, just to share a few, not surprisingly, data shows up. You know, How do you get your data in shape to be able to do good AI on that? Shortly behind it, or very close to it, is skill sets, you know, because this is complex, as you know, I've talked about it. This is kind of complex, and do we have the people internally to be able to use AI and be able to deploy it how we intend to? And then, you know, surprisingly, power and cooling shows up too, even though as you and I have chit-chatted quite a bit about it, like power and cooling seems like a big issue, but when you really parse it by use cases and think about it, we can deploy it, yeah, it turns out there's a lot of uh, power around that you can actually do something with. So all of those show up and just like uh, we realized early on in our journey that governance and security is a big element, which led to obviously us having a chief AI officer and you, uh, and the first one of the first in the industry, that shows up quite a bit too. So a lot of exciting stats around that, um, but net of it, this train is not stopping. People are deploying these use cases and very, you know, very interesting news when companies are thinking about it in a very sophisticated manner. They're looking at the TCO. They're deciding, you know what? Running it in the AI, all of a sudden the public cloud doesn't make sense. So 79% of them are running it outside of the public cloud between a combination of on-prem and, and uh, PCs. Um, many of them are actually moving uh, to open source models very aggressively. So, you know, a third of them are already doing it today. By the end of next 12 months, two thirds of them are gonna move over there. And uh, as we, you and I have talked a lot about this pace of algorithmic innovation is just phenomenal here, right? So the other thing interestingly popping up is these small language models are becoming much, much more prevalent. And guess what? You can actually do them on a PC pretty well. So a lot of excitement about moving over there. You know, a third of the organization are planning to test it over the next 12 months. So a lot of dynamism. I think we as an industry have watched when does it really start moving to production? It's happening now. Yeah, what, happening was, now. what, what was surprising is, you know, one, 3,800 customers, so it's not a small sample, and the, the trends kind of matched what we were seeing. It, 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 still, it still tells us this is early, the market yeah. is still forming, but certain common threads are materializing. And, yeah. you know, we've talked about them. I mean, you know, I, 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 I really like the fact that we're not seeing kind of a homogeneous deployment pattern. Correct. People are thinking about where to run this. I've said before, you have to make strategic infrastructure decisions. Just because you happen to work in a public cloud or an on-prem environment or, or for your legacy workloads, that's not AI. You have right. to pause and think about it. And I think we're seeing people do that in a very thoughtful way. And you know, from a new technology perspective, you know, we're well beyond the this is in the future. I mean, AI PCs are being deployed, yeah. people are using them, it's early, but but people are trying to figure out how to put the parts together, how to what models to run. And that's just a you know a good indicator that the industry is starting to mature. We're yeah. we're early, but we're on the journey and the data I think gives me a lot of a lot of support you, in what I've been saying. And you know what the interesting thing to me was, you know, gosh, we started on this journey almost two years ago, right? If you remember those days when we step step back and said, hey, what are the core beliefs that define it? It turns out those core beliefs are still there and the data shows that. Yeah. All about the data, better to bring AI to data than data to AI, yeah. which is where the PCs come in. No one size fits uh, all, so small models, open models coming through, yeah. open modular stack and a broad open ecosystem. The echoes of all of those beliefs, I am, I am still, actually I was still surprised and pretty 
Um, you know that here it is two years later, and yeah. the core belief still operates. So that was a pretty durable construct we came up with. Yeah, yeah, no, I, and you know how often do you guys do these surveys? You know, it's uh, we've always we've done pockets of these surveys yeah. before. So you know, we would typically go out every three to four months, get a little bit of a pulse check. Yeah. But this was the first time we went out and looked globally. Yeah. We surveyed 3,800 globally in five different countries because we wanted to see are the patterns different or not. Yeah. Much to our surprise, you know, we put half of the uh, data set in U.S. Much to our surprise, the rest of the world is kind of mimicking the U.S., maybe lagged in some spots or not, but we ended up doing it every three or four months, but this one was a pretty good uh, and comprehensive coverage across five different countries. Yeah, no, I think you're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, you know, um, you know, what's interesting in, in our world, you know, <laughs> is that we're a global multinational company. Yeah. When we do AI, we're not doing it just in the US, we're doing it globally. And when we serve our customer base, our customer is global. And what we've found is, is you pick the right problems. Make your sales force more productive, make your service organization more accurate, make your supply chain run more efficiently, uh, you know, uh, and, and fundamentally make your products better. Those things seem to span geographies, so it doesn't entirely surprise no, me that doesn't. people are coming to similar conclusions. Yeah, absolutely. And let me let me just ask you a question, though, John. So you wear two hats. So in your chief AI officer hat, looking at the data, looking at the experience we have gone through, what advice would you give to those watching in terms of what they ought to do and focus on? Yeah, I mean, I've I've talked about this at length, but if you if you roll it up, especially with this new data, you need to get moving. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this is not something that only like four companies in the world are focused on. This is a, a technology that broadly, at least the larger enterprises around the world, and maybe some of the mid and small size ones, are actually starting to tip over into production. So, so the first piece of advice is you need to get off the fence. And yeah. in order to do that, we've talked about this in other, 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 other sessions, you have to answer two questions. What are you actually trying to do? Where are you going to apply this? Remember, the definition of enterprise AI is the application of AI to your most impactful processes and the most important parts of your business to improve your productivity. If you still can't answer that, if you haven't found that, that first place where if you just made it better, your business would perform better, you need to get moving on that because without that, you don't really know where to apply the technology. And then the second piece, which again, the data really supports is, you need to figure out how to do this. Where yeah. do you want to run your AI applications? What is the right technology stack? And what we're seeing is, you know, customers are, are working through that. It, will this be highly centralized? Will this be multi-cloud? Will this be built on a modern data foundation? Will this be extended out into the client devices? All of those are, you can clearly see there are massive amounts of customers around the world having discussions around that right now. So I think, you know, uh, there's a million things you can do, but at the macro level, the most important thing that this data really supports is you have to start moving. You have to start figuring out your first target, pick one that delivers ROI, that actually has an impact, because the first one's the most important one. And then second, look at this data and you'll see trends. Yeah. You don't have to do it in a black box of magic in the cloud. You can do it in the right place. You can think creatively and we're learning different patterns that you can emulate. And I've always said the two things that will get our the AI market moving are one, that we actually have consumable technology, which we are largely seeing happen. And right. the other is that we have people to emulate, that other people have gone first. Yeah. And I think 3,800 people are on this journey yeah. and we're on this journey, so there's a lot of examples out there. No, you're right. And I think, I, you know, I always think about the earlier conversations we had. An AI strategy does not exist in isolation of your business strategy. Yes. This is your whole point about yep. you got to know where you start, what makes you special, and you got to get off the dime. If you don't move now, you might be too late because the rest of the world is moving and you might be left behind. So well put, John, yep, yep. well put. So, so uh, you know, we love data. We love hearing from people. So, you know, if you, uh, you know, if any of you listening to us have opinions, if you're working on a cool use case, if you've navigated this, uh, send them our way. We'd love to hear about it. More importantly, as we do these surveys, if you're a customer at Dell's, which most of you probably are, uh, you know, respond, give us your feedback. They're very powerful to aggregate up the information that we're seeing from the market. And again, it's it's nice, you know, to see, uh, you know, validation that this market is starting to move because, you know, I'm still very optimistic. You know, 2025 is the year where we start seeing kind of the, the breakout of enterprise AI and with it all of the impacts of productivity, improvement across all industries. And that's going to be a very powerful tool and it's nice to see it be real. So again, thanks for joining us. Thanks for being here. Yeah, absolutely, John. Glad you're going to be here. All Thank right, you. Thanks.